Ah, another beautiful day in Varrock. I wonder what's gonna happen today. Ah, not this guy again. Yo, good morning, Billy. Do you see this cape? Yes. Do you know how long it took me to get it? Yeah, I do. It took you seven... That's right, Billy. 771 hours. World record, baby! I'm so sick of this. It's not even oppressive on a main account. What did you say there, Billy? Okay, everybody is thinking it. You should say it to him. Okay, you've been telling everyone in Farrakh about your time every single day for the past four weeks. And this is it. I can't take it anymore. It would be much cooler if you did it on an Iron Man. Really, Billy? An Iron Man? No, wait. Actually, do it without a bank. Oh, so you mean... Yes, an ultimate Iron Man. I think you wouldn't last more than a day when you struggle to do Cook's Assistant. You think so, Billy? Well, I'm gonna make an ultimate Iron Man right now and max it within 2000 hours. No time to waste, so see you later, Billy. <laughs> He's not gonna make it. Oh, yay, it's time for my seaweed and birdhouse run already. That's right, folks. Welcome to the Maxcape Speedrun Any% percent Ultimate Iron Man Edition. All adventures in this game start on Tutorial Island, so here we are once more. And after getting rejected for the RSN Billy Bob 93, I ran out of ideas, so I had to go with which means absolutely nothing because I just spent my keyboard to not waste any more time here. Okay, locking in the game mode. And now ready to go to the mainland as an ultimate Iron Man for the first time ever. So what does an ultimate Iron Man mean for the rules of a series like this? Well, an ultimate Iron Man already has quite hefty restrictions on its own. I mean, not being able to use a bank is quite a change for my main account. And furthermore, ultimate Iron Mans cannot trade other players, no except 8, so no spec transferring. Also not able to enter other players POHs. But because this is an any percent run, I am allowed to use alts and pay for boosters. However, one thing I do not want to do is paying for mega scale Chambers of Zarek for my resources. As this is taking too much away from the Iron Man game mode. And it's also giga expensive, but that would just be boring to watch and takes away too much from like Herblore and stuff. And just like last time with the main speedrun, this one is being tracked with in-game time, so it is allowed to do certain logout strats if needed. Alright, let's begin. After starting my first quest, X marks a spot, I sold the items from Tutorial Island and bought a spade. Questing is the name of the game right now. The GP and XP rewards from some are indispensable for early game. But at one agility and no access to energy potions or teleports, we are very limited on run energy. I'm going to start every single quest I can and do all the steps in that area before I move to the next. When executed properly, you can complete multiple quests at the same time without having to backtrack for just one quest. So after starting some quests in Lumbridge and getting 300 GP from pickpocketing men, we bought a steel axe, started room mysteries on the way to the top floor of Lumbridge Castle and got 14 fire making. And then we moved on to Draenor Village to continue with X marks the spot. And for the last step of this quest, I dug up a performance package 4.0. That's right, today's sponsor is Manscaped. Spring has sprung, and our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming, have the best tools for some spring cleaning in your pants. Trust me, your confidence will be blooming like flowers. Look your best this spring and join the other 8 million men who trust Manscaped. Use code HEYBOXJUNGE to get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Manscaped are here to change the way you can take care of yourself and groom with the Performance Package 4.0. Inside this bundle you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold your goodies. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is an elite electric trimmer that has advanced skin safe technology. Which means this trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. The lawnmower is also waterproof and equipped with an LED light so you can trim in the dark or in the shower. You can save 20% off and get free shipping with the code HEYBOXJUNGE at manscaped.com. That is 20% off and free shipping with the code HEYBOXJUNGE at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Alright nice, that is the first quest completed. Holding on to the lamp for now until I have a POH. And straight away on to starting more quests. From Port Sarum to Karamja to Remington to 
to Falador, and now in Yanil, to pick up some quest items. And I got here so quickly with the use of the Clan Wars minigame teleport and going through the Castle Wars portal. This minigame teleport is going to be my best friend early on in this route. And now that I mentioned the word route, I've been asking some big brain UAM gamers for the help with planning out this account. And one person in particular, called Kella, ranked 9 overall on Ultimate Iron Man high scores by the way, has helped me big time. He had a somewhat outdated efficient Ultimate Iron Man guide laying around. So after some adjusting with new content and quests, I was good to go. I'll leave his old guide in the description because I made the adjustments in a separate document and it's not ready to make public yet. And I did mention this briefly in the opening skit I made, but the goal of this account is achieving a maxcape in less than 2000 hours. Current HP for Ultimate Iron Man is a little bit over 2000 hours right now. And most methods are kinda perfected already because of the limitations of the game mode. But I do have some tricks up my sleeve to save some time. So the sub 2000 goal is possible, but it's gotta be a close one. And another goal is to finish it before the new skill is added to the game. But I think that should be fairly easy. Dancing with the monks right now to finish monks friend for 2k woodcutting xp. That gets us to level 13. So we need about 20 logs or so to get to 15 for oaks. And that is also the reason I only got 14 fire making in Lumbridge instead of 15. Because I can just burn these logs that I cut here to get it. And we can start cutting straight away with our steel axe. And since my run energy is low, and I still want to do a lot of stuff in this area, I'm going to get through the fire making at Oaks now, just AFKing and letting my run restore. Because it literally takes 10 plus minutes at level 1 agility. Like, why? That is 2D fire making done, and now going to do some business in Ardy. Made some great deals with the Ardy Baker stall. Got all these cakes for free. And there is 22 thieving. Also stealing some silk now to trade it in later for the diary step. Because I would like to unlock the RD Cloak 1 as soon as possible to have a decent way of getting back to this area instead of having to use a minigame teleport to Fishing Trawler or to Clan Wars and then use the lever from Edgeville. And since we can't trade in the piece of silk that we just stole for another 10 minutes, I'm going to do some quests. That is Sheep Herder and Tribal Totem. We also used the GP from Sheep Herder to buy a POH and got 4 construction from using the X marks the spot lamp on it. And it's probably not a surprise, but the early game goal is to get to Winter Tot, so we want to get our construction up a little bit to start gaining more XP at Tot, since it scales with your level. So ideally you want to have at least 16 construction or something like that before going there. And construction costs money, so quickly getting the 10k from the Stronghold, which I'm going to use for completing Daddy's Home. And this is the first time I've had trouble with the amount of items I can carry. Daddy's home requires 10 planks and 5 cloth, but I can only carry 7 planks. And the rest of the items in my inventory are all necessary for quests, so I quickly drop the items for Cook's assistant, since I can just get those back fairly quickly in Lumbly, if I don't make it back in time. But yeah, this route is so good that we went all across Gilenor to gather items, complete quests, and now bring those items back to the start again, to finish quests that we started on the first minute of the speedrun. Luckily, I did make it back in time to pick up my pot of flour, egg and bucket of milk. After running around some more in Farrok and got 9 Slayer and 9 Hunter, we are now back at Lumbridge to finish some quests. But let's go over the plan to get the Winter Dot efficiently. We need a couple more things. 50 fire making, and for that I plan to do 3 tactics. But in order to be able to do that, we are going to need 19 Herblore for Guamtar or 46 Fletching for Teak Stocks. But training fletching normally is terrible right now, and it just gets done zero time anyway at Winterdot. So we need to get 19 Herblore somehow. Luckily, there are some quests that we can complete early on that should get us to level 19. Of course, first is Druidic Ritual to unlock the skill. Client of Corrent gives two lamps of 500 XP each, and we both put those on Herblore. And then we do Jungle Potion. And lastly, the Dig Side. That is 19 Herblore taken care of. Also need to get fletching up a little bit because of the scaling. And I bought some feathers and fletched some arrow shafts. And now entering the combat training camp to finish the RD easy diary and to buy some bronze arrow tips. These arrows should get me like around 20 fletching which is more than enough. Picking up the RD cloak as well. And we gotta save the lamp until I'm through the construction at winter dot. But the RD cloak is super helpful. Very close to fairy rings and just a nice teleport to have in general. We still need to get our hands on a guam leaf to tree tick with. 
And lastly, also a games necklace, which requires 22 crafting, 7 magic and a gold bar. I completed several quests for the crafting level, murder mystery, an observatory quest. Actually got an uncut sapphire from the observatory quest reward, which saves me a trip to the gem trader, I guess. And the gold bar I got from the dig side quest reward. Sapphire necklace made, now I need a cosmic rune and level 7 magic. Decided to knock out the 7 magic and the guam leaf in one go by killing cave bugs in the Lumbridge swamp. They have a 1 in 8 drop chance of a guam leaf, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. I still need to level up my magic a little bit, since I'm only able to use wind strike right now. Dude, these things are OP, man. I don't think I can kill more than one here. Like it's healing back to full. What? Man, it just healed from 1 HP to 5 in like a couple seconds. I didn't know they had such an insane regen rate. Two hours later. Dude, I might have to go back for food if I don't get this on drop rate. Please just give it me on the first kill. <laughs> and now risking it all on the way to the mage bank for a cosmic rune. There we go. The game's necklace enchanted. I'm not gonna lie, if I got PK'd here, which was pretty much impossible because the wildy is dead, I would probably just have reset my account since I'm not that far in at, um, at this point. Another moment where I was really close to resetting was Waterfall Quest. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so lucky. I did complete the quest though, and I didn't die. That is 30 attack and 30 strength. Now time to get 50 fire making for Winterdot. The only place with multiple teaks I have access to right now is on the north coast of the Isle of Souls. Which is stupid big by the way, I couldn't even get there with 100% run. Once there I turned on the visual metronome, since I cannot afford to make tar here. It would lose me a lot of time if I had to go back for more tar. And it's actually surprisingly difficult to stay on cycle with this. The lack of a stall or an animation can throw you off quite easily. So I just had my eyes on a number and chopped away. The success rate with a steel axe isn't too great, but it's not worth it right now to get a higher tier axe. And once I filled my inventory, I tried to burn down this stupid island. And sometimes trying to light the fires in a pattern to fight the demons of boredom. It's actually kind of wild that it is going to take me like two and a half hours to finish 50 fire making as an Iron Man. When as a main you can just buy the logs and do 50 fire making in like less than an hour. Final woodcutting level here at 48. And of course we stay efficient and light our last inventory of logs while running. I need to have food for winter tot, but as an ultimate Iron Man I can't really live on cakes as I would need to steal more every couple games. So the way for me is going to be pineapples. Well there's 50 fire making. But I buy the pineapples from the charters and note them as a tool leprechaun. And now with these noted pineapples I can just unnote a few every couple games and just slice them up for HP. However I will still need to leave Winter Tot occasionally to bag my loot. Because I can't bank the crates from Winter Tot so I have to go to Ferox for a looting bag now. Kicking rats out of Ferox is a good way to obtain a looting bag if you aren't risking much. I actually should have deposited my GP here, in the coffer, but the chance that I'm getting attacked here is very, very slim. And on top of that, I got a looting bag after two kills anyway. Always lucky. So let's talk about the looting bag. The looting bag stores up to 28 tradable items or stacks of items. It is going to be my main way of carrying more items than my inventory allows. So for now, I'm just gonna stuff the bag with all my winter tot loot, but if I want to use one of the items from my looting bag, the only way to get them out is to either suicide and re-bag the other items, or destroy the looting bag inside the wilderness and quickly pick up everything, since it will be visible to all players instantly. So I am probably only doing the suicide method for now. Getting my last warm clothing piece before teleporting to Winter Todd. So here we are at the Winterdot prison. 
Doing Winter Todd early on is by far the best thing to do on any Iron Man. Not only is it the best way to train fire making, you also get passive XP in 3 other skills as well. Woodcutting from chopping the Bruma roots, fletching XP from fletching the roots into kindling, and most notably you gain construction XP from repairing the braziers. This allows you to skip the very slow and expensive early levels of construction. And I started here with 48 woodcutting, 25 fletching and 16 construction. And for the playtime and progress when entering Winter Todd, I have 26 quests completed so far for 46 quest points. And I've already done one game in this clip, so the playtime was around 12 hours before entering Todd. And the total level was around 450. There is 70 fire making and already up to 36 in both fletching and construction. Now up to 74 in just 6 games. And as an ultimate Iron Man it is much better to do dolo winter dot instead of hopping. Since with hopping you fill up your inventory very quickly with supply crates. As you only get 500 points per round and you can do like 20 rounds per hour or something. And solo or dolo takes around 50 minutes to complete just one round. And since I'm limited on inventory space and cannot bank, it is much better to max out the rewards per crate and keep like 6-7 crates on me before opening. The cap for rewards per game is 13,500 points. So we're getting pretty close to finishing this round and I'm going to open the crates I got so far after this one. But first let me explain Dolo Winter Todd. I'm using an alt to help me speed up the games and XP per hour. After a game ends, I log out on my speedrun account, then start the game on the alt to lower it to around 30% and gather a full inventory of rejuvenation potions. This allows me to fully focus on XP on my speedrun account because I can just heal the pyromancers on my alt when needed. And also I can finish the game much easier with two accounts instead of having to run around non-stop on one account. Teleport into Varrox now to start the opening. But before I open the first crate, let's take a look at the potential loot from Winter Todd. In total there are over 50 different items you can get as a reward, like logs, gems, herbs and seeds, and even fish. But my looting bag can only hold 28 stacks of items, so I will have to drop a lot of the loot. The main things I'm keeping are noted logs for birdhouses in the near future, gems for some easy crafting XP, and the majority of the low level seeds and herbs, and of course the coins. So the first crate, nothing special, I'm just gonna bag all the loot I need real quick. Second crate also not that special, up to 42k GP though. And now for the third one, oh, a Thome of Fire, let's say 1 in 1k. And that is really helpful to get early on, and it's gonna help me with questing as well. And the other crate didn't really have anything special in it, not even a pyro piece. So we're going back to Winter Dot. And hopefully I can finish 99 fire making with just this one game's necklace. But I think I have to save up a little bit more crates for the next time. Quickly cooking some noted fish I got for some cooking levels. And also we almost got 100k GP. Only 12 GP off. And there is 23 cooking. And I can't even cook the salmon so I'm gonna drop that. Time to get some more crates and some more fire making XP. There is 10kc, we are now a winter dot champion. AD fire make. Forgot to record the second crate opening, but we only got a pair of warm gloves to show for. However, I want to try something else now. Since I'm doing dolo and I slowly lower it from 30% to 0 over the span of a game to maximize my XP an hour, I get slightly less construction XP per hour. Because the chance of the brazier breaking goes up a fair bit when the percentage is under 10. But I'm not camping sub 10 as you would need to fletch and wait for the percentage to go up sometimes. And that is cutting heavily into the XP an hour. So I'm going to do some brazier hopping to boost my construction XP a little bit. What this means is that I hold two worlds at around 10% with my alts and just quick hop between them with my speedrun account. And most of the time the brazier goes out again in like 10 seconds so I can just repair and light it and then just hop again. Also, another benefit of this is that when I hop, the in-game timer gets passed for a couple seconds. The XP per hour on screen right now is off, as the XP tracker doesn't pass when you hop, like it does with logging out. So the effective XP per hour is actually double of what is on the screen. 
So over 40k construction and like 310k firemaking XP. And that only at level 84 firemaking and 58 construction. Granting me a little bit over EHP. I know I don't get any loot for this, but I would really like to leave Winter Dot with at least 70 construction. So I'm gonna do this for a little bit. I went back to normal dolos after hitting 60 construction with the hopping method. And now almost done with my 7th game, so we're gonna open 7 crates in a bit. That is the game done. Let's make our way over to the Verox Enclave to open the crates. Hopefully we can get some Pyromancer pieces this time, because I'm closing in on 90 fire making and I still only have warm gloves. And a tome, of course. First one, nope. Second one, a Bruma Torch. That's actually quite helpful, as it is a storable light source in the POH. That's gonna come in handy for questing. Nice, the Pyromancer top. And the Hoot as well. Two more to go. Oh wow, also the ropes. That is back three back for the Pyromancer pieces for the crates. That is kind of nice. Can we get the boots as well on the last two? No. Quick tip for those who want to be a little bit more efficient and active while winter totting. When a brazier goes out and you click to relight it, immediately start a fletching action the tick after. Then, when you see your fire making XP drop, wait one tick to get your kindling. You can also do this after a repair, but you have to wait an additional tick if you dodge the damage from the brazier. So sometimes what you can do is to eat the damage from the brazier and immediately repair it and fletch if the pyromancer didn't die of course. That saves you an additional tick. But basically what you're doing is saving 3 ticks per kindling as you only have to wait 1 tick after the fire making action. And normally fletching is a 4 tick action if you just afk it. And also if you dislike doing solo, just do dolo. That makes it so much better. You don't have to worry about healing the pyromancers on your own. So it's much more relaxing and much better XP per hour as well. There is level 90. No, I trolled. My account doesn't have member anymore. I thought I had time to bond it at Wintertot, but apparently I was too slow. So we're in Lumbridge now. But I'm gonna open these four crates now since, yeah, I'm not at Wintertot anymore, so might as well. Alright, let's see it. Hey, there are the boots. That is full Pyromancer achieved. And also a Bruma Torch and Warm Gloves, but that doesn't really matter. Got myself 8 more crates and up to 95 fire making, closing in on 96 already, so we are pretty close to being done. Let's see if these crates have anything special. There's no way that just happened. I got a Dragon Axe on the Ultimate Iron Man speedrun. Holy. <laughs> well, that is um, something I did not expect. But that saves me hopefully quite a bit of time in the future with construction and woodcutting. Damn. Wow. <laughs> the rest of the crates were kind of ass. So now back to Winter Tot and down to the last charge of my game's necklace. So I can probably do like 15 more or something kill count. And I think that should get me over the finish line for fire making. And a little bit more brazier hopping towards the end to make sure I manage to get 70 construction. And keep in mind the XP an hour shown on screen is actually half of what is like the effective XP rate. So getting over 50k construction XP is pretty solid and also getting over 300k fire making. And that's the final brazier before 70 construction. I don't think I have to touch construction until we do some of the elves pretty much right now. So that is really nice to have out of the way. And I'm about to finish the final game and stopping around 50k off 99. Because I will finish that in the future with quest rewards. I think all the fire making quest rewards is like 55k or 60k. So yeah, we pretty much have 99 right now, but it still says 98. But after those quests, we will have 99. Alright, done opening the final crates. Nothing special. But I'm keeping a couple stacks of items on me. Some noted fish for quests as food. 
and note the T-clocks to do some tick manip later on. So we can just simply unnote one T-clock and do some knife logging. Alright, I think it's time to wrap this one up. And let's go over the progress we have made. Total level of 416 in 2 days and 8 hours of playtime. And here are the stats that make up the 614 total. Pretty much just all Winter Dot and some questing stats. And we got 58 EHP in 56 hours. So we're actually 2 hours ahead currently. But I think that will definitely decrease in the next one. Since the next episode will be full of questing. And also a quick peek in the looting bag. I think that's also something I do want to show at the end of every episode. To see the progress like in the looting bag. So pretty much all winter dot loot for now. And the noted logs are going to be really useful. And the gems as well to skip some crossing levels. But other than that we can't really use all the seeds and herbs yet. But um, yeah. I'm very happy with the progress so far. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. So please leave a like. Share it with your friends and have a good one. See you later.